It's time! The moment you've all been waiting for! The first trial of cartoons and Danganronpa is finally here! Oh gosh, I'm so excited! This is the moment we all find out who decided to take my life into their hands. Wow, that sounds kind of screwy when said out loud. Anyways, I hope you've all got your theories ready! This trial is going to be a doozy! And, uh, pretty long. Try not to get the urge to go to the bathroom anytime soon. In fact, go now. Mm, go on, I'll wait. <laughs> now that the viewers with weak bladders are gone, let's start without them. Remember, check the description for a cut for heads of list of the evidence. You're going to need it. Welcome to the class trial.
Suppose a brief explanation of the class trials in order. During the class trial, you'll discuss with your fellow classmates the evidence of this case and who you think it points towards. Then you'll choose who you think the culprit is through majority voting. Vote correctly, and only the black end will face punishment. Vote incorrectly, and everyone besides the black end will face punishment. If they manage to dupe you all, the culprit gets a free ticket out of here. Good luck, everyone! Alright, does anyone have an opening statement? Titties! Does anyone else have an opening statement? What a peculiar circumstance! A smelly room full of smelly people! But one of us is the smelliest! If that's how we're gonna judge this, I'll place in my vote right now. Don't be ridiculous! Someone died here! The least we could do is take this seriously. I mean, if we don't, something bad's gonna happen to all of us! But what could possibly be worse than bad hygiene? Wow, this really is a mystery! So, how do we start this stupid game? We just start pointing fingers at people or something? No, we need to be smart about this. Everyone here is on equal footing in terms of discussion. Anyone can bring up, accuse, deny, or redirect anything, so long as there's some reasoning behind it. I suggest we all pay very close attention to what everyone has to say. Sim accuses the dip. Except you! I'm tuning you out! Unfortunately, we can't do that. Regardless of who we know, don't know, or plain dislike, someone here killed Star. We'll only find it out through a fair trial where everyone's voice is heard. Everyone, you say? Heist. I still maintain that the killer here is Monokuma. But why? He's the one who started this whole killing game. Of course it'd be him. No, no, no! I'm just gonna butt in right now so we don't go through this entire topic again. Seriously, do we gotta go through this discussion in every single game? You already know it wasn't me. That goes against the rules of this game. Rule schmooze! Who says you couldn't just kill whoever you want? It's not like there's anyone to punish you for breaking them anyways. <sighs> Let's get this over with quick. Hey, Dipstick! Huh? You of all people should know why I'm not the killer. Go on, tell him! Uh, okay. Way to put me on the spot. Yesterday, Monokuma had me hostage after the event in the gym. Monokuma could have split me to several pieces, but let me go after injuring me a bit. I even used this as part of my plan. I thought he wouldn't do anything to any of us because I assumed he couldn't harm us. Turns out, that rule only goes as far as not taking one of our lives. It would defeat the whole point of this game anyway if Monokuma got involved. Every game has its rules, even stupid ones like this. I 
I think it's safe to say, Monokuma didn't kill anyone. Hmm. I guess you're right. Not happy about it, but... whatever. Thank God! Now that that's over, the actual juicy stuff can begin. You're really invested in this, aren't you? So... he really is one of us. Don't be sad, little one. The only tears I want to see are the ones in my underwear! That's tears, not tears. Uh, not that I want to see either. Alright, here's a suggestion. Let's talk about all the details we know about the murder. Maybe during that discussion, we'll catch something that doesn't quite line up. Great idea, Dib. In that case, does everyone know the basics of what happened? Yes, ma'am, I'm all caught up. I still don't know why Star didn't join us, though. This is gonna be a long trial. Star's body was found in the kitchen. She has a deep cut in her neck that is likely the cause of death. For some reason, she brought her scissors with her, too. Oh, I know why she brought scissors to the kitchen. It was to cut the cheese. Star must have been fighting until her last breath. And yet, it was all for nothing. What a weakling. Star died in the middle of the night. Likely around the time that the deadline for the hostage is ended. This is getting us nowhere. Do you guys want to die or what? Star's body was found in the kitchen. She has a deep cut in her neck that is likely the cause of death. For some reason, she brought her scissors with her, too. Oh, I know why she brought scissors to the kitchen. It was to cut the cheese. Star must have been fighting until her last breath. What makes you say that, Morty? Well, if someone was trying to kill me, I'd obviously have to fight back. Star's no pushover. She must have swung at her killer the moment she was struck. That's wrong! We've already seen evidence that suggests Star wasn't able to fight back. Not only does everyone here see one injured, but Star wasn't even able to hold her own throat when she was struck. Yeah, that's right. Her hands are clean of blood. In case you didn't know, 
the first instinct someone would have after having their throat slit would be to clutch it to relieve the pain. Star's hands should be covered in blood in that case. But they aren't. If she couldn't even do that, she probably couldn't hit her attacker either. Huh? What does that mean? I was thinking she died instantly. Seems pretty reasonable considering the circumstances, right? I don't know. That cut doesn't look deep enough for her to immediately croak. Then the fool bled out with her hands tied behind her back. A devious maneuver, but a classic nonetheless. But wouldn't that mean that she was tied up before she was killed? Why would somebody do that? And when would they have gotten the opportunity to, to tie her up? All right, all right, I think I've heard enough. Huh? We can discuss all we want about how Star was killed or if she was tied up or whatever. They won't get you actually did it. What do you mean, Kyle? The way Star died doesn't matter. What matters is who had the opportunity to go to the kitchen last night and kill her. There's only one person who fits that description. I wonder who it could be. It's Cartman! Oh, great twist! Oh, wow. We're doing this already? Yesterday at 11.50, I caught Carmen trying to go to the kitchen. We argued in the second floor hallway for a few minutes, but I let him go and he didn't return until 12.10. Carmen was at the crime scene for an extended period of time and has a minute to scoping out people to potentially kill. What a coincidence that we got a dead body on our hands in the kitchen. Yeah! This is slander! You got nothing to back up your thing! You were in the kitchen last night! Yes, I was! God fucking damn it! Wait, you're just admitting to it? It's too late to stay quiet now, Cartman! And even Cartman is telling us he did it? We can probably end this trial now. Hey! I didn't kill the bitch! I was only headed to the kitchen for some grub. Just cause I went down there doesn't automatically make me the killer. But if what Kyle is saying is true, that still makes you the prime suspect. Plus, I don't like you. Feelings mutual, asshole. I may have gone down to the kitchen last night, but I didn't kill the bitch. But if you really want to down there, then you have to be lying right now. The Earth Child had to have perished sometime last night. Her being present at the gym during the second motive proves this. But how, Scary Green Man? We all split from each other after the boy with the hat was crippled. And the body was found this morning. Even though we ain't got a specific time of death, Anyone who was downstairs at night time is going to have some explaining to do. So that's how you want to play, huh? Well, newsflash, I didn't see any of you guys when I went to the kitchen, including Star. That's wrong! You may not have seen any of us, but that doesn't mean you went undetected. Cupcake was in the kitchen that night. Like she always is. Yep! I figured that since she was born there, she should live there. With that logic, most of us would be living in hospitals. 
Cupcake is always present in the kitchen. So you should have come across her. Eh, what would happen if I said I didn't see her? You'd be lying, obviously. Oh yeah? Prove it, dipshit! What makes you think I did anything with that weird cat thing? Cupcake was extremely aggressive with all of us during the investigation. That includes Charlotte, her handler, and up to this point, best friend. She's even been shown to dislike antagonistic people before. Yes, the fiend is not particularly friendly with me. Not that I wanted to be. This didn't seem to change during the investigation. The only thing that was different in the end was her affection for Cartman. So that's checkmate, right? We've got someone at the crime scene at the time of the murder. This is also the same guy who stated before that they wanted to kill someone. Not to mention the fact that they have a motive. Huh, that was fast. I'm almost impressed with ourselves. You really hate me so much that you're willing to end this shit already? I didn't fucking do anything! Oh, wait! Huh? What is it, Bubbly? This doesn't feel right. Eric might be the main suspect, but... Doesn't that make Cupcake's actions seem weird? Cupcake's actions? She didn't just treat Eric differently. She treated him positively. say this for all fiends, but for Cupcake specifically, that would contradict everything we've known about her. She already loved Charlotte and hated Vendetta, so I don't think that's the right answer. But if Carmen was down there, he has to be the killer! There's nothing pointing towards anyone else being at the scene of the crime! Kyle, when you saw Cartman, what was he wearing? Uh, what he's wearing right now? What kind of question is that? One that proves someone else had to have been downstairs during the murder. During our investigation, 
we found a large black sweater and a ski mask. Both of these have a very high chance of being related to this case. The ski mask has a small drop of blood inside of it, and the black sweater didn't even exist until we found it this morning. Huh? Why would someone bring those with them to the kitchen? Not very flattering. According to Dib's nerd brain, the lights in the cafeteria and kitchen are dimmed down at nighttime. With these two things in mind, you could easily blend into the shadows, like some weird baggy ninja guy. Oh, I see where you're going with this. If Carbon didn't have the black sweater and ski mask on his person, then who did? What? Ah, did you that kill? Shut up, Carbon. You're not clear just yet. What if the sweater and the ski mask were prepared in advance and hidden downstairs? Oh, so Cream Puff put what he needed on the first floor and then came back for them when he knew Blondie was coming. Then he could have used them during the murder without showing Kylie at him. Yeah, well that's gotta be it. Huh, that theory has many, many holes in it. I don't think Eric can fit that sweater. He's a big boy, but not that big. Ah! The sweater is indeed quite large. Not as large as my tallest, but still quite impressive. I doubt the majority of us could fit into such a thing. Not to mention the fact we found the sweater in the Ultimate Sweater Designer Lab. Kyle, you saw Carmen come back to the second floor. Did he have this sweater with him when you saw him? No. But... Why did Eric hit the sweater downstairs? Went to go get it after seeing Kyle, used it during the murder, hid it again, went back upstairs to see Kyle, waited until Kyle went back to sleep, and then went to grab the sweater and brought it back to... Um, never mind. That's probably not it. Uh, well, that settles it. If Chubby couldn't bring the sweater back to the lab undetected, he couldn't have been the one who brought it downstairs. And considering how premeditated this crime seems to be, if he didn't bring the sweater, he's probably not the killer. I demand an apology. I told you guys I didn't do it. You don't get what you don't deserve, fat boy. I've got just one question, though. Why would he tell us he went to the kitchen in the first place? Grease Trap could have just kept his mouth shut and we wouldn't have had this problem. That is pretty weird. Hey, Eric, what's your angle? Obtuse, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> that was so unexpectedly clever of you, Ed. I have my moments. Um, you think there's a reason he would just reveal this information to us? Come to think of it, Eric has been revealing a lot of incriminating details about himself since the other day. Should be. A little too honest, if you ask me. Ever heard of a pen pal, Pinocchio?
saying what? I still don't get it. We've got to talk about Eric again? Sadly, yeah. Can't figure out this mystery otherwise. Think of being a nuisance. No, I don't think so. It doesn't seem like he wants to tell us these things. Truth check? somewhere. Gosh, this debate team thing is super fun! Poor fools! The answer is obvious! What could it be? No, I don't think so. It doesn't seem like he wants to tell us these things. Someone forcing him to tell us about his plans? Maybe he's sick. I've seen some weird magical diseases like this before. Oh, oh, I know! He's got a tummy ache! You got it! Ed, I think you may be onto something. Hmm? I'm not onto anything. And nothing's onto me either. Hey, Ed, there's a spider on your back. Oh, no! Get it off, baby! Get it off! Works every time. Uh, that's not what I meant. Not exactly a tummy ache, but it does have to do with eating. I've been wondering why this bottle of monosalt is lying next to the memway. But, remember Cartman's story. The bitch. I was only headed to the kitchen for some grub. Just cause I went down there doesn't automatically make me the killer. Carmen was down there to grab something to eat. The reason the model sauce was left on the counter was because Carmen ordered it for his meal. There's a menu outside the kitchen that listed as one of the items you can order from the memory. And Dip, didn't you say something about the model sauce being an experimental item? Yeah, I'm still not sure what it does, but all experimental items have some kind of side effect. Yeah, like those chips that make you shit green. Shit's freaky, dude. Fuck! I, I was eavesdropping on you. Fucking stop, God damn it! I think I know what the side effect is now. The model sauce acts as a powerful truth serum that forces the person who ingests it to speak honestly. Not only does that justify Carmen's weird behavior, but it also explains the footsteps I heard the other day. Uh, did anyone else hear that? Hear what? Never mind. That was near nighttime of our third day here. Then, on the morning of our fourth day. Ah! Eric learned how to order things from the Memwave during Dib's demonstration! You were spying on us? <laughs> what 
have it. you kill her or not? His silence proves it! You went downstairs last night and killed Star! He won't open his fat mouth because he knows he'll blurt out the truth! No! I didn't kill her, goddammit! Fuck you, Cal! The truth comes out! I'm never touching that shitty sauce ever again. No matter how tasty it is. Looks like we did it! We can strike someone from our list of potential candidates. Well, at this point, we might actually- Quit your blabbering! Uh. You truly are foolish, stupid morons to not realize what this means! Foolish? Stupid? Moron? Mate! Dipper, what's she talking about? Yes! Please kindly explain what contradiction lies in the large one's truth. Carmen went to the crime scene. I was there long enough to prepare a meal. But if he's telling the truth, why didn't he see any of us? Ha! Ah, it seems you're not as useless as I thought you were. He said so earlier. Well, newsflash! I didn't see any of you guys when I went to the kitchen, including Star. Nah, that's easy to explain. He got the time of death wrong, obviously. The time of death? We assumed that the murder took place around the time Cartman went downstairs sometime between 11.50pm and 12.10am. But the reason we assumed that was because we thought Cartman was the killer. If the Earthling cannot lie to us, then there is no doubt that the murder happened after the meeting of the Hatted Boys! Woo! Are we doing spaceman talk now? Eh? No, this is a perfectly normal dialect! Be silent, blue one! Um, in, in that case, uh, are we back to square one? What do you mean? Well... If the murder happened after Cartman came back to the second floor, uh, then we don't have a prime suspect anymore. Plus, uh, almost no one has an alibi for that time. We can only rule out uh, superheroes and Cartman. Even Kyle's back on the list of suspects. Hey, what the hell, dude? Ah, sorry.
sure didn't see anything. Then the time of death has been wrong this whole time. There's something that's been bothering me. Must have been for a midnight snack. Just like Eric. That seems way too convenient. You think she was planning to kill someone too? Absolutely not! Star was not that kind of person! Trust me, Star wouldn't lay a finger on anyone! Well, of course they were evil. You've only known her for a couple of days, right? Can you really judge someone's true feelings in such a short amount of time? I think I have an idea. You got it! That's it, Bubbles. You hit the nail right on the head. Exactly what she did, Dipper? She reminded me of one crucial piece of evidence we found during the investigation. This here is one of our monocolors. We found the hit inside of that ball of yarn in the Ultimate Sweater Designer Lab. Zip slides his way in there with his weird hair. I said, don't make fun of it. It looks good on me. For some reason, we're able to unlock this phone without the usually required fingerprint identification. Check out the last two messages on it. Now that's a piece of evidence! Whose phone is it? That's how we'll find the rat in this group. I'm not sure. For some reason, there isn't a name listed anywhere. You had me and you lost me, boy genius. The interface is incredibly lacking, but you're still able to type on it. Even if we can't determine who this belongs to, the times on these messages are incredibly telling. Hey, level 50 pumps? Wow, that's a lot of pumps. Wait, 1150? Where have we heard this before? That's the same time I ran to Cartman in the hallway. <laughs> Interesting. Do you know what this means? It means that. It means when Star was supposed to head downstairs. Kyle and Eric were occupying the hallway. So then, how did she get downstairs without being spotted? It even says in the message that she should avoid being seen. That's not exactly possible when Cartman and Kyle are blocking the exit. Measly bags of flesh, you've changed nothing! This only proves that the magic girl went to the kitchen after 12.10. Zim is still right as usual. Hmm, that sounds pretty weird, though. Is that a challenge, ballerina girl? A challenge? Not silly. I just think it's strange that she would take someone back like that. She said, I'll be right down. But that would be like... A 20 minute waiting time. I don't think you'd be very nice to leave someone waiting for so long. So what? Who cares about being nice? Just wait for them to be finished, stupid girl. Yeah, not seeing how that changes anything. Well, you have to think about it from Star's perspective. She has no hostage, no target on her back, and a fairly uh, bubbly personality. She was probably the student in this game with the least amount of built-up stress overall. Except maybe Charlotte. Hooray! 
we had just received a message about Link's gate plan from a trusted friend. It even told her to come down as soon as she got the text. I can totally believe that the bitch would try to get to the cafeteria as soon as possible. She's not exactly what I'd call smart. Cut her some slack. She's not an idiot. Besides, you're missing the point. Right. The real issue is... How did she get downstairs in that time without Cartman and Kyle seeing her? Star did have a method to sneak past Cartman and Kyle. Oh yeah! She was able to create portals and jump with those things, right? With a portal, she could easily make it to the cafeteria unnoticed. There's also another piece of evidence that suggests Star left in an unusual manner. Pairing it with the scissors makes everything line up. Star left her monocolor inside of her room. Huh? Why would she do something like that? Yeah, don't we need those things to open our rooms? Don't Juan just lock itself out? That would be the case if she didn't have a way to get back without it. That's right. If she could teleport back into her room, she wouldn't need her monocolor. Then we've got our answer. She uses scissors to- We interrupt this program to bring you- Impossible! Need I remind you that those scissors were a failure in every conceivable way? It was so bad, it caused that Lovick's over there to bash his head against the wall! Fun times, fun times. If you can't remember that, then you have no business being here in this conversation! Whoa! Calm down! This isn't baseless. There's another reason why I think this is the method Star used. Then prove it to me, Tree Beast! Because from Zim's point of view, you're in the way of Zim's survival! Scissors are completely useless in every way. Are you insane? We already saw her plan fail. Ow! She tried to escape this building to no avail. So how can you suggest she used them with no evidence? Watch it! You will stop hitting them this instant! There's no evidence that points to the scissors being of any use. The scissors were definitely used here. Gas can attest to this. Do 
Do I have to? Yes! Fine. I saw a bright light flash in my room twice last night. I didn't see what it was, but I guess it could have been Star using those scissors to teleport into my room or something. That's stupid. If the scissors really worked, then why wouldn't she just use those things to leave this dump? Because she couldn't. Well, now you just contradicted yourself. Can she use the scissors or not? I didn't contradict anything. You have to remember, for the past few days, Star has only been using the scissors to try and escape the school. So what if it isn't that the scissors aren't working, but they're just heavily restricted? Hmm, good point. Even though the scissors appeared to be broken, she was still making portals either way. You'd think that she wouldn't be able to make them at all if that were the case. Then if Star instead created a portal that teleported her within the confines of the school, there wouldn't be any issue. Unfortunately, that's also wrong. Huh? If that were the case, then there would be no reason to enter Gaz's room. The only way Gaz could have seen the light emitted from the portal is if they were used to enter her dorm. However, all that would do is lead to her being potentially spotted by gas. She could have just teleported directly to the cafeteria instead. Um, oh, alright. I'm a little lost here. So, why did she choose Gaz's room? She didn't have a choice. Well, this is confused. For once we're on the same page, Lumpy. Think about it. What happened when we start demonstrating going through a portal on our first day? She cut the area in front of her, created a gateway, then what happened next? She went through a portal, obviously. <gasps> Star can still go through portals. She just can't go through portals. Not to mention that bit of hesitation in her voice. And I'm back at it. Ooh, wait a second. That's different. does have a point. I, um, kind of have experience with this sort of thing. Whenever Rick uses portal gun, uh, a, fa a failed portal will usually have the user bounce, bounce off of it, not, not being able to enter at all. That, or, or you'll disintegrate. Yay! Disintegration! That's my word of the day! Where are you going with this, Dipper? A portal isn't just a flat object, it's a gateway. Something that connects one area to another by introducing a physical null space. Now, let's imagine that said null space was put onto a piece of solid matter. Said solid matter would be, in short, gone. For a brief moment of time. It would essentially give something a temporary state of non-existence by storing it in a- Oh my god, you're boring the absolute shit out of me! Just say it's used the scissors to face of the wall already! Oops. What? Yeah, that's pretty much what I mean. Dipper, where did you learn all this stuff? Gravity Falls and journal number three. Never leave home without it. Oh, sweet! You went through with that idea of writing a new one! That was fast. But wait, so you're telling me those things can't teleport, but they can go through walls? Then no one has to die anymore! We've got our escape route! Holy shit! 
You're right. We we can just use the, the scissors uh, on the outer walls of the school and- Oh, you're right there, buckaroos. Since I messed up and spoiled a crucial trial detail, I might as well give you the run down these scissors. Uh-oh. That doesn't sound promising. True! In this school, the scissors can only go through walls. It's just as Dipper suggested. Portal creation temporarily replaces whatever object your space is placed on with magical portal matter. Think of it like you're a digital artist. You've done the line art, coloring and shading on a character or background. Then, while you're putting on the finishing touches, BAM! You realize too late that you've been drawing on the wrong layer! That mistake that you just made is now a part of that drawing. It's completely replaced what was originally there! The only way to get rid of it is to hit undo and restore your work to its former glory! In a nutshell, that's what these scissors do automatically. The entire process of placing a portal on the wrong layer and undoing it seconds later! Isn't that neat? However, in their current state, the range of thickness that they can be used on is quite limited. Thickness? Not that kind. Gosh, and they say I'm gross. Shut up! Uh, that's not what I was thinking. As of now, the portals can only move through a surface of around five to six inches or less. That's just barely enough to go through something like the average host peak dorm room. But as for the outer walls of this academy, that chance. How do you know all of this, Death Bear? Why else would I allow Star to keep such a powerful tool? Hope's Peak has done loads of testing to make sure each and every method of escape is impossible. Should be relevant later. Daddy loves him some foreshadowing. Anyways, back to the show. It's been settled then. Star used the scissors to go through the wall to Gaz's room. I'm not quite sure I'm fully grasping Star's actions. If she didn't want to get caught, why go into Gaz's room? Why didn't she create a portal towards the back of the dorm rooms? That way, she wouldn't have had to pass by anyone while sneaking around. Maybe she already tried that and it didn't work? Looking at the map for this school, the back walls of the dormitory seem to be much thicker than anything else. Monokuma already said going from room to room is just barely possible. This extra space is probably too much for the scissors' limited range. Not to mention Blossom and Bubbles were gone for that night. Going into Gaza's room meant she only had one person to sleep past. The other two rooms would have been empty! Hey, going the other direction wasn't an option either. That's like three people Star would have had to sneak past instead of one. Huh, so it was the least risky option available. I get it now. Hilarious that her failing to stay hidden actually helped us. You've been silent for a while, asshole. What's on your mind? Just one thing, if Star went through these three rooms and appeared out of this wall at the end of the hallway, why didn't you see anything, Kill? I was kinda yelling at you the whole time. Not to mention your fat frame limited my field of vision. I speak up for once and this is what I get? It makes sense though. 
There would have only been a small amount of illumination coming from that area since it's facing away from them. It would have only lasted briefly before being shrouded in darkness again. Very plausible for Kyle to miss something like that. Especially with Cartman there. the real time frame of the murder. Due to the argument that started at 11.50 p.m. and Cal's presence on the second floor until 12.10 a.m. That has to be the frame of time where Star was murdered. Star's response to the text message shows that she had to have been alive at 11.50 p.m. She had to have already been downstairs before Cartman arrived and by extension, so was the person who sent her the message. The murderer. One of you assholes almost definitely killed to save one of the hostages, too. Take into account the motive deadline, and you can reduce that to a 10 minute window 11.50 to 12. That raises another question, though. How come Eric never saw anyone while he was down there? Uh, I've been thinking about this, and maybe the murder didn't take place in the cafeteria. There's a blood trail that shows that she was dragged to that spot in the kitchen. Maybe she was carried there after Carmen went back upstairs? No, the message Star got clearly said for her to meet them in the cafeteria. If Eric arrived shortly after the murder took place, they couldn't have gone very far. Plus, the only reason the sweater and ski mask were used was to shroud the killer's presence in darkness. If the murder happened anywhere else, they wouldn't have needed to prepare those two things for the kill. We would have seen another trail of blood somewhere if the murder happened outside the kitchen. Ah, uh, I guess you're right. My bad. Alright, check it. I've got the perfect theory that'll blow this whole case wide open. Watch and learn, simpleton. What's it get learning, Eddie? Uh, hi. This is Cheesy. <laughs> I hope everyone's enjoying everything so far. Uh, but I'm about to break up the flow of this video. Uh, a lot. If you don't care about what I've got to say, there's a timestamp on screen so you can skip forward to the rest of the trial. But if you're watching this live, then, uh, yeah, maybe go to the bathroom or something and get some dinner. I don't know. So why am I here? Well, because what's happening here is that this script is now around two years old, and in that time I've learned a lot more about my personal limitations and trimming the fat of my writing. See, what Eddie was about to bring up was the possibility of an item from the Memwave being able to make someone invisible. Dib denies this and says that only he and Gaz would know any secret codes that could create any experimental items. Dib saying that put him and Gaz on the hot seat, as if the theory is true, then Dib and Gaz are the only potential candidates for being the blackened. This starts a new minigame, which, yeah, I'm, I'm accepting defeat on and saying it's too ambitious for me to animate. Essentially, it would have had Dib and Gaz piloting a box and moving up and down to avoid arguments while Dipper asks important questions for them to refute. I've mulled over this for a while now, trying to make this work in a way that I find satisfying, and I think at some point you just gotta accept that you can only do so much. I like impressing people, I'm a perfectionist at heart, and those two things kinda combine to put me in a rough spot. So for the sake of actually, you know, releasing this video without having to rewrite, re-record, and re-edit several minutes of footage, I, I hope you don't mind that we just move on from this and continue with the rest of the trial. At the very least, I'll put what's missing from the script into a pinned comment below once the livestream ends, so you have context for what was originally there. Again, sorry about this, I'm still learning a lot about editing a big trial like this, and we'll do better next time. Anyways, back to the show... 
looks like the membranes are innocent after all! I never really thought of them to begin with. I just wanted you guys to defend yourselves. Man, I thought I had that. Well, you win some, you lose some. Phew! Glad that's over. I'm still waiting for it to be over. What are you talking about? You're free, aren't you? Not what I mean. Hey, moron. Huh? Who? Me? You've got one more chance. You waste my time any further and I'm stepping in. I'd like nothing more than to get this over with and go back to bed. You're getting in the way of that. Jeez, when did you get so hostile? Depper's been doing most of the heavy lifting in this trial. Show him a little bit of respect. Yeah, I'll be sure to do that after he does something he's supposed to do. that I found really interesting. Dipper, you said you saw someone at 12.20 a.m., right? Ah, right. I woke up last night and heard distant footsteps moving through the hallway. I was still in a really weak state at the time, and I couldn't see very well, either. So when I peeked outside the nurse's office to check who was there, all I saw was a shadowy figure walking away from the storage room. I'm assuming this is our killer, correct? Huh? Away from the storage room? I thought the killer was in the cafeteria! Isn't that almost on the opposite side of the building? That's right. But there's a reason for this. We know that the killer used this ski mask during the murder. When we found it, it contained a very small bloodstain on its inner walls. It's likely the killer came back to the storage room to return this mask, leading to Dipper accidentally seeing them. Yeah, but like, why? That's what's been bugging me about this. What's the point in returning the ski mask to the storage room? Why not just take it with you? Especially since, you know, there's blood inside. Fools! It's very simple! The killer wanted to hide the mask in plain sight! By grouping the mask with others of its kind, it would slip past everyone's detection! Unless it doesn't, which is what happened. But, look at the map again. If Dipper is telling the truth about the pathway the killer took, they would have almost done a full lap around the first floor. Would they really want to risk staying in this area for that long just to put the mask back where it belongs? What about- That's it. I can't listen to this anymore. Leave it to my geeky brother's best friend to overcomplicate a problem this badly. Huh? In this enormous tangent of discussion, you've managed to not only fail to reveal the obvious, but also implicate me in the process. You're even more pathetic than I imagined.
Let's step back for a moment and remember what this whole conversation was about, shall we? This here is one of our monocollars. We found the hidden inside of that ball of yarn in the Ultimate Sweater Designer Lab. Someone messaged Star last night? Whoa, now that's a piece of evidence! Whose phone is it? That's how we'll find the rat in this group. I'm not sure. For some reason, there isn't a name listed anywhere. I've been sitting here hoping that someone would bring this up. But of course, I have to be the one to state the obvious. At this point, how Star got there and why Cartman never saw them barely matters. What matters is the monocolor itself. If we find the owner of this unclaimed phone, we find our culprit. It's as simple as that. Then... What are you saying, Gaz? You guys are seriously bad at this. Just have everyone pull out their phones. Whoever doesn't have an eye brain on hand is the killer. Even if there's more than one person without a phone, we've at least narrowed the list of suspects down. Here's mine! Now, if you didn't kill Star, I suggest you show us your monocolors too. Now! Well, uh, it's mine, I guess. Mine too! Thank you! Naturally! This will be the only time you instruct me on anything, Purple Girl! Uh, here! I hate when you do that. You don't even got a show, man. But I'll do it anyway, just flex. <laughs> got it! I got mine! Same here! And here's mine. mine went. I must have dropped it somewhere. Jenny? I, uh, left mine upstairs. No, really, I, I know how this looks, but that's why it's not here! Mabel? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you weed out suspects. You could learn a thing or two, Ultimate Detective. You two, we've got a lot of questions for you to answer. Neither of you have your phones. We've got a phone with no name on it right here. Whoever this belongs to was the one who sent the message to our victim. The one who killed Star. Our culprit is one of you. Whoa! Can you believe this, guys? It looks like it's come down to two prime suspects! I'm on the absolute edge of my seat! Um, but don't you already know who did it? I'm playing it up for the camera. Now, shoo! You're not even supposed to be here! Hmm, someone gets their own talk show and now they think they're the Queen of England. I had to give her a piece of my mind, the princess or the queen or whatever she is. Anyways, we've reached the halfway point. The video ends here, but it will continue onwards in part two. See you then! Man, I'm good. I should get my own spin-off show or something. Maybe one where I fight monsters and defeat evil. Oh, I could have a cute boy as my sidekick too. We could call it Star versus the Forces of Evil. 
Yeah, I like the sound of that. That's just your original show. Hey, don't stifle my creativity. Excuse me. 